my sermon this morning will fall under the general heading of good works. You will remember in class, for those that were there, that we mentioned in Ephesians chapter 2 that we are Christ's workmanship, that is the church. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. There's much that we can learn about that. And you might want to turn to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke 10, 38 through 42. And we'll look at that here in a moment. As Christians, the New Testament teaches that we have many responsibilities. The Bible teaches us about the responsibilities of parents, of spouses, of children. 1 Timothy 5.8, Colossians 3.18-21. It teaches us about the responsibilities that employees have and employers. Colossians 3.22-4, verse 1. We also see that we have responsibilities as neighbors, and Jesus even tells us who our neighbors are, anybody in need of help. And even we have responsibilities to our enemies, Luke 6, in verse 27. And in studying the Christian life about living from day to day for the Lord, then we see where He's instructed us in these areas and others. However, sometimes what is good can actually get in the way of what is better. Now think about that for a minute. Sometimes what is good can get in the way of doing what is better. And this can happen when we fail to properly prioritize our activities. We can be so involved with what is good that we become blind to what is better. Now, we, of course, are talking about all that we talk about being authorized by the Lord, Colossians 3.17. So what is good and what is better are all authorized by the Lord. It would be good or better. But when you write the, by the word of truth and you look at the works we're to be involved in, the good works, then you're going to see that the Lord does have something to say about good, better, best. Now in Luke 10, 38 through 42, we are introduced to Mary, Martha. There are two sisters. And I think in looking at this verse that you'll see it can teach us much about a good thing hindering one from experiencing something better. You'll remember that the scripture says that Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus were loved by Jesus. John 11, verse 5. And with those comments, we want to turn to what we have as our text on Luke 10, 38 through 42. And we want to read that now, and you can read along with me. Now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her, her house. She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard the word, his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus said, answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now as we look into this, you'll see in verse 38 that Martha was distracted by a good thing and fail to see a better thing. She's invited Jesus to her house 
And I know she's a hospitable person. I know she's concerned about making sure the house has been swept. And if they'd had vacuum, she'd had probably her brother and sister vacuuming, mopping the floors. All those things that are native, or at least used to be, to women who are homemakers. And it's thought that since she did the inviting, she might have been the eldest and thus sort of hitting up things like this. But be that as it may, here we are. And you see people then, though in different technology and language and culture, still things work pretty much like they do today. So her hospitality is certainly commendable. And it's an example for every single solitary one of us. They had been taught in the Old Testament. Isaiah mentions it in Isaiah 58, 7. And the Hebrews writer mentions it in Hebrews 13, 2. About preparing to take care of those who have their needs. James 1, 27 would fall into that category. Pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the widows and orphans and their afflictions and keep oneself unspotted from the world. However, Martha was shall we say, overly involved in much serving. Verse 40 says as much, Martha was cumbered about much serving. I think it's interesting, though the scripture doesn't say this, you can just see it. Here's a brother and a sister and another sister living together. Got all, as we would say back at home, we got all this bunch coming over here and the Lord's coming over here. Now, how do you expect me to feed all this bunch by myself and get it all ready, get the table ready? So she may have already said something to Mary about this, and she thought, well, I'm going to enlist the Lord's help in this. If he tells her to come in there and help me, she will come. Well, whether that's the case or not, she sure thought Mary ought to be in the kitchen helping, that it was a wholesome and good thing. And who among us would say it's not? It was. For what an honor, especially, was it to have the Son of God, the Messiah, to come to one's house and to visit. And you want to make him as home as possible. And, you know, possibly there were others visiting beside Jesus. His disciples may have been very well been with him. And there may have been her family. We know Lazarus and others were there. Uh, neighbors, who knows? Jesus was a very famous person to this time in Israel. And it's only natural that Martha would want help from her sister. Verse 40. So she says to the Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Better therefore that she help me. I might mention this in passing that the Greek word translated help only appears one other time in the scriptures. The idea is, is that together we get something done. But by ourselves, we don't. Now you can make the application when it comes to God and you. So Martha began to be anxious. Does that sound like anybody? And to fret about getting things done. As she thought they ought to be. Now note that. She's got it in her mind. Here is how things ought to be. And I'm going to line them all up and get them in order. <laughs> That's what she's doing. Just think of the request she made of Jesus. But Jesus pointed out in verse 41. Called her name twice. Martha. Martha. Thou art full of care, careful, even to the point of being troubled about not some things, but many things, many things. And here's where our lesson begins to develop. Getting so caught up in good things, you don't see the better things. She hadn't mind doing what any good homemaker would do and getting that house just where it ought to be and the, everything fixed for lunch or whatever. And who is in the living room teaching? 
Why, it's only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's only going to be engaged in this teaching for a very brief time. But she's afraid she's going to burn the beans. <laughs> and I use that, of course, as the way we think of things. So the problem was this. These things that troubled her took priority when they shouldn't have. Important? Yes. They're important for wives to learn what their duty is, even as it is so of husbands. Paul even tells Timothy and Titus about teaching and the preaching of the gospel, what people ought to do as far as aged men and aged women, young women. But this really is applying what Jesus taught Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things shall be added unto it. So these things that concerned her and troubled her, causing anxiety of mind and distress of spirit for Martha, was because she didn't have a priority straight. She didn't understand the principle of first things first. Now the question we need to ask from this very simple rendering, and it's in your Bible teach you a lesson. What lesson do you get from it? Do we, like Martha, allow that which is good to get in the way of that which is better? <laughs> now, let's leave Martha for a moment. In this case, it's obvious that Mary had her priorities right. Notice how Jesus puts it in verse 42. 42. But one thing is needful. Notice Jesus talks about what is needed. Martha had some wants. And what she wanted was help and doing something important. But Jesus says, you need to realize in view of this case what is truly needful, what you really need. And notice who Mary hath chosen. She made a deliberate choice. She's chosen that good part. Well, in view of the fact Jesus is in the front room teaching, then everything going on in that kitchen should have been left alone <laughs> while we listen to Jesus. Mary has chosen that good part, and it shall not be taken away from her. Many times, especially in our young years, if we don't learn this lesson, we'll make maybe one decision. But it has far-reaching consequences the rest of our life. And if we don't get our priorities straight, we'll launch out into some education or some job choosing a spouse or whatever else and every one of those things good things the Bible has a lot to say about them telling us how to get our priorities right with every one of them but maybe we didn't consider putting the kingdom of God and his righteousness first as we chose one of those things and what we chose may have been perfectly all right but was it the best thing was it the better thing was it needful and need here ought to be seen the light of does it help me serve the Lord better? I don't think many people choose things on the basis of does this help me draw closer to the Lord? Not that the thing they chose was bad in itself, but does it really help them grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? She chose to sit at Jesus' feet and hear His word, verse 39. Now, Sitting at his feet was, was an expression that was used to describe the place and posture of the disciples before their teacher in those days. You can see that in Acts 22, 3 and other places. We still use that terminology. I said at Professor So-and-So's feet to study this. So we still use it. Doesn't necessarily mean we actually did, but there was a time when they actually sat at the teacher's feet. That's what Mary did. And it indicates she was his disciple by sitting there listening, being instructed. 
She wanted to learn from him. He's not going to be coming into her living room that often. She was more concerned about being then a good disciple. The better part, that's what the Lord says. He's chosen that good part. She was more concerned, and rightly so, about being a good disciple than a good hostess. Now, being a good hostess is important. Not here. Not here. The Lord said so. If you want to argue with that, I don't have much to say to you. The Lord said Mary's the one who's done the right thing here. Does that mean that Martha was not doing a good thing? No. What she was doing was what any homemaker would do. Anybody making a guest feel comfortable and welcome. But she let it go too far. Those things that are not wrong within themselves, sometimes we get so involved in them that it takes time away from true Bible study, our prayers, our working with the brethren, being mindful of those not as blessed as we are. And it's not that we've chosen a bad thing. It just simply did not choose a better thing. Notice she chose the one thing, according to Jesus, that was needful. But one thing is needful. Verse 42. So when all is said and done, there's one thing that is necessary. And all that was going on in that house, in view of who is teaching in the front room, we might say, what was needful? Be out more in the yard? Fishing? Feed the chickens? <laughs> Whatever you do? Or leaving all that alone and sitting at the feet of Jesus? In other words, seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness in this case, Matthew 6.33. She chose that which had eternal rewards, Luke 10.42. And the Lord said, that's not going to be taken away from her. I thought about that sometimes. We choose a good thing, but it fits this life and how God said we're to live this life and things that are important. But then something else comes along, like this case, and everything we do, you know, if you've got a ham cookie, and they wouldn't have a ham cookie, but we would have a ham cookie. If they had something like that cookie, or we do, that pales into absolute insignificance when the Lord's in the front room teaching. And Mary chose that good part which will not be taken away from her. People can take things away, and they do regularly. But this is something that cannot be taken away from Mary. She's listening to the Son of God teach, and he's only going to be here for a little while. I think of times over the years, all the way back to my youth, when you had a gospel meeting going on, or you had something special in the way of lectures or Bible study. I think it, when it comes down to Bible study nowadays, and people find all sorts of other things they'd rather be doing. Well, Jesus offered blessings that would last, according to John 4, 14. And everything that we do in the church that makes a difference is eternal in its rewards. And because her sister was so cumbered and troubled and anxious about these mundane things, she missed what should have been. She was in there clattering the pots and pans, and Mary was listening, and yet she comes in there and says, Lord, send her in here. In effect, what was said was, no, you leave that stuff and come sit down with your sister, for she's chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary had the discipline to seek first things first, thus putting the better before the good. Her priorities were right. So I ask you, what lessons may we learn from Mary and Martha? Well, let's look at a few of them. If you haven't already been making those applications in your own mind. This world is full of things that are not necessarily wrong within themselves or sinful, but they distract us. 
I think the best example I can think of that is even to this day, and I'm sure indefinitely into the future, are the people trying to drive this track it around, traffic around here and trying to text on their phone. Now let me ask you, is that distracting from what should be their first goal to drive safely and not at least run over me? But that's the way people are about it. how many things. Our duties as husbands and wives and fathers and mothers they're important. We need to follow the Bible's teaching on them. But you get so involved with those things that the study of God's Word and teaching your children the importance of doing the work of the church slips away. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know this, you won't have your children very long. They're going to grow up and leave you. you got one strike zone <laughs> when it comes to teaching and training and setting a godly example before them. We have responsibilities at school or responsibilities in the community and things like that. <clears throat> They're important. The Bible addresses those. But it doesn't rule out Matthew 6.33. Matthew 6.33 controls our involvement in them. Jesus warned against following such things and allowing them to take precedence in our lives. Some people at family take precedence family and work cannot come before the kingdom of God cares of this world can render us unfruitful and leave us unprepared when the Lord teaches about the word being sown in the different kind of soils representing the different kinds of attitudes and minds or the hearts of men only the honest and good heart is one that receives the word and brings forth fruit like it ought to the others all receive the word, but the things of this world distracts, takes them away, and makes the kingdom become secondary and subsidiary to the interest of everything else. If we become distracted by good things, we'll find ourselves like Martha. You know why? We used to say this years ago, and now we have to change it, but I remember preaching sermons back when I was in my 20s on the aspirin age because a lot of these other things hadn't been given to you. But now I'd have to say, what, the Valium age or some other age like that. We'll find ourselves like Martha, worried, anxious, troubled, and stressed out. It seems to me we hear a lot about that nowadays because we don't know how to choose the better part. And we may find ourselves like Esau, who sold his inheritance, which is so very important for just a morsel of food. And it's used as an example by the Holy Spirit in Hebrews 12 and verse 16 as one who really didn't care for what was important, who didn't choose the better part. Now, are we distracted from doing the Lord's work by things that are within themselves good? Are we like Mary? Are we disciplined? This country is overall not a disciplined country. Discipline means there's a rule to follow. There are those principles that govern our lives. To seek that which is better, the one thing that is really needed, as I've said it all the time, Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Martha didn't understand that. Mary did. Eternal life and the blessings which accompany it, we won't obtain it if we're not disciplining our minds and structuring our minds, our hearts, according to the teaching of the Lord. Notice, whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. I'd say that this would be a subheading on first things first to what he was talking about there. Jesus simply taught the value of choosing the good part. Have you ever had somebody when you went to ask for advice, maybe, I don't know, maybe parents or somebody else, and you ask them about doing this or doing that or making this choice, and they don't want to say, no, don't do that. Do this. 
They want you to think a little bit. And then they say something like this. Well, yeah, you can choose that way or whatever it might be. But have you thought about this? <laughs> have you thought about what that means down the road? Not that the way they were choosing for the moment was a bad thing and a sinful thing, but wisdom says, do you realize what that may mean on down the road? God providentially cares for us, and that's what Jesus is teaching in Matthew 6, 31 all the way through 33. But it's conditional. You put me first and my word first. And these things will be taken care of. Ample surplus will be given by God to us as He knows our needs when we sacrifice to serve God. Are we sacrificing peace and happiness and joy? Seeking after things that are not wrong with themselves, but they anchor you to the here and now and cause you to become distracted from more important things. I suggested, not quoting scriptures here, but the Bible's full of that kind of material and lessons for us. If we're disciplined enough to make the proper choice, then we'll be like Mary. There's no indication that she's troubled. She's free of anxiety. She's praising the Lord. And that's because she learned not to listen to Martha maybe at times. <laughs> we'll find ourselves like Job at the end of all his troubles, experiencing the end that was intended by the Lord. Have you not heard, as James says, the patience of Job? Life is a place to prove to God you love Him, that He's more important than anything else on earth. So have we disciplined ourselves to choose not just a good part, but to recognize the difference in the good and the better part? Martha had the opportunity to serve the Lord again. That's true. Hopefully she learned her lesson on a joyous occasion after the raising of her brother from the dead, John 12, 1, 2. She served, and the Lord doesn't condemn her for that. Obviously, she must have been putting first things first. If you do this, you will remove from your life a lot of taking thought about that, which you can do nothing about, and having it upset you. And you won't be rebuked by the Lord. You ever wonder how Martha felt when the Lord said, No, I'm not going to ask her to come in there. And called her name, Martha, Martha. You're missing it, Martha. You're missing it. Mary's chosen the better part, not pots and pans and moving a table or whatever. The Messiah's in her living room and she knows it. And she's going to listen to it. And that's where you ought to be. And so such is the case for those who will learn a simple lesson, but a powerful one, important one, from Mary and Martha. Putting first things first. Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness in their lives. And the particulars that are involved in such mundane things is preparing a meal. When the Lord comes first, we all become better whatever, better hosts, better spouses, better children, better parents better neighbors, better workers. It's far better than if they tried to do it on their own without God's help. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, should be a guiding light that helps us see the things that are good. But when there's something better, we'll choose that over what was good. If you're not a child of God this morning, we beg of you to think along those lines. 
to truly believe in Christ with all your heart based upon the teaching of the scriptures, Romans 10, 17, repent of your sins, Acts 17, 30, confess your faith in the Christ and be buried with your Lord in baptism for the remission of your sins, Romans 6, 3 and 4, Colossians 2, 12, Acts 2, 38. As a child of God, think we learned anything this morning that can help us be a better child of God? Examine more closely the decisions we make in all areas of our daily life to make sure we do learn the lesson that Martha needed to learn and that Mary did. If you need to repent of sins, we urge you to do so and confess them and pray God for forgiveness. Take advantage of this time because there may not come another opportunity and do so while we stand and sing.